Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out another flight controller from SpeedyB. This one here is a 35 amp F7 all-in-one. So I'm excited to use this on my 3-inch build and see how light I can make that quad. Initially, I wanted to use that flight controller on my Quadmilla frame. This is the frame I fly all the time that has my O3 air unit, my super light O3 air unit. Challenge here is that this, as you can see, is very long and narrow. And the all-in-one is about 36 millimeters by 36 millimeters. So it will stick out past the frame, which I don't like. So unfortunately I can't put it into this quad here, but I can put it in this quad. This is my QAVS mini. Again, it's a three inch, but you can see how much wider this is. So this frame is wide, but narrow, and it does support a 25 by 25 mounting pattern, which is what the all-in-one SpeedyB flight controller is so I'll be putting it into this one here instead let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing I'll show you what it comes with like always the speedy B comes with this really good QR code where you can get their amazing manual then we have the all-in-one over here not much more to it than that finally we have a couple of accessories XT30 we have the capacitor and one extra gummy that's very generous we have the USB port which is very important is not connected to the board itself we have a DJI connector here which looks like it's for the old school air unit and then we've got a couple of screws. So pretty minimal accessory package. This AIO or all-in-one controller really tries to prioritize lightweight and compactness. So I'll tell you what features it has, but you know, it, it's, it's very minimal. And the intent here is that you go with this for a very compact and lightweight design. So first of all, it does support 3S to 6S uh, LiPo, which is great. These mounting holes are in the 25 by 25 configuration. Note that this is quite a bit larger than the actual 25 by 25. So you can see on my quad mulla how much it would stick out. So this will, will not work. You've got the F7 processor here, which is great. You've got an MPU 6000 gyro, which is fine. You have a BMP 280 barometer there, which is again, good. In terms of connections, you can see that there's only this one connector, which is for a DJI air unit. It passes through VBAT, so bear in mind that this does not have a 9 volt or 12 volt uh, back on there. It does have a 5 volt back, but that's all it's got. And you can see no other connector. You could go ahead and solder up that USB port over here if you wanted to. You will require that the battery be connected to this in order to access it on your computer. So I think this is probably better suited to be used with the Bluetooth app, the SpeedyB app, which is how I will be using this. It's got eight megabytes of memory on board for Blockbox, which again is, is fine. I did mention it's got the five volt uh, back on here. It's got four connection points, which you can total 2.5 amps. Again, that, that is fine. It's got four UARTs, which is perfectly fine for a smaller build like what we'll be doing. The ESC is a 35 amp ESC, which is perfect. It is BLS. It supports up to 45 amp um, as a five second burst, which should be more than enough for our three inch quad. And finally, it supports D-Shot 300 and 600, which perfectly fine. I'm making good progress on the installation, but let's do a weight check. So this guy's advertised at 10.1 grams. Let's check. Okay, 9.54, that's good. Here's the iFlight stack I was flying previously. You can see I've done as much as possible to lighten this down. So I've removed connectors and I try to make it as light as possible. Let's see how much this weighs. 14.78. Okay, so roughly let's say five grams lighter. Installation is all complete. It was pretty straightforward. There's a couple of things. First of all, this frame, you can see here that it has this little uh, press nut in there. So I had to cut this gummy so that this was nice and level. The other thing is the capacitor that it comes with is a 470 microfarad capacitor. It was too large to clear the camera. So I went with my normal 220. That's what I used on the prior iFlight stack. Other than that, uh, pretty good. The layout of the connectors and the layout of the solder points are pretty good. Only thing is there's only one VBAT connection, which is all the way over here, and it's covered up by this battery lead. So not ideal, but it was fine. Everything else was right in this area here. Let's do the first power up. One, two, three, please don't blow up. Okay, we're good. We have power to the Vista, power to our Express LRS, 
and we've got lights flashing and things happening on the AIO. I've got this back apart again because there's a couple of lessons learned and I had to get back in there and rewire. First one, I had my Vista connected to UART1. So I had these two cables here, the pink and the white. I had that on R1 and T1. And it looks like there's a limitation of the F7 processor. So this is not anything to do with SpeedyB. But with the F7 processor, if you have something on the R1 and the T1, and that thing is powered on when you're doing a firmware upgrade, that firmware upgrade will get stuck on initializing DFU, and it won't work. Usually it's not an issue because on most flight controllers, you plug it into your computer, you don't power it on, you don't connect the battery to it. But with this guy here, you need to connect it to your computer and plug the battery in, so it kept failing. So what I've done here is I've moved the Vista from R1, which was down here somewhere here, I moved it over to R2 and T2, and then I was able to do the firmware upgrade without any issues. And it's not just connected to your computer, if you also try to connect it to the SpeedyB app for the firmware upgrade, that will fail as well. So just imagine that R1 T1, and T1 doesn't exist. Hopefully it doesn't cause you any issues with your build. The other thing I did here is I did connect my USB uh, connector here temporarily. It's pretty easy because it sticks out over here so you can still access these connections with the top deck on. But the reason why I've done this is I mentioned that this comes with a Blue J, which allows you to do uh, the bi-directional D-shot, RPM filtering, all those things. It actually does not come with BlueJ, and BlueJ is an ESC firmware, so I had to connect it up to a computer and put on BlueJ as well. In order to install BlueJ, what you wanna do is open up your Chrome browser, it has to be Chrome, and you wanna go to esc-configurator.com, and then plug in your flight controller plus the battery, make sure your props are off, and then click on open port selection and you should be able to see your flight controller over there. Mine is COM8, so I'll say connect. And then we see it's connected. I wanna do at the very bottom, read settings. And then everything comes up and you can see I already have BlueJ on here, so I've already done this. But what you will do is you'll say flash all ESCs and then you can select BlueJ. So by default, it comes with BL Hell ES, which does not support the bi-directional D-shot. So you'll say BlueJ, you want JH40, and then you'll go latest version and then select your PWM frequency. I went with 48K uh, here. You can choose whatever one you want. So 24, 48, or, or 96. So I go 48 and then just click on flash. Just got back to the first outing where I flew 10 packs back to back and it flew very well. I still have to do a bit more PID refinement on this flight controller, but it flew very well for the first time out. I even did a couple of full throttle punch outs just to make sure that the ESC can withstand the amp draw. I think I pulled about 50 amps in that uh, punch out. Again, everything worked really, really well. So quite happy with this flight controller stack. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.